we are uh, here in the Bahamas. We're we are going yeah. to make it right. If you became a millionaire, would you keep working? You know? Great job, brother. Good plan to make sure you're ah! What's going on right now is California's trying to figure out. Oh, I can. Welcome to BitBoy Crypto, home of the Bit Squad, the largest and greatest channel, crypto community, and all the interwebs. No channel works harder to keep you in the know about crypto. You know what I started realizing? We stopped saying the people's channel. Hmm. Stop saying the people's channel. Welcome to BitBoy Crypto, the people's channel, home of the Bit Squad. Um, all right, guys. Uh, my name is Ben. We come to you every single day, exactly 11:30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Anyone who watches this show knows that. Uh, that's why you guys are never, ever, ever late. Always on time. It is Monday, March 6th. It is 71 degrees. I'm going to be here for most of the month. Um, so you guys can expect to see me on the show every day, pretty much. Uh, we do have to actually, you know, I do have to record the audio book for uh, catching up to crypto. Uh, my mom got a copy in the store. She nice. was so excited. She got the last one they had. She said she felt bad. So Well, that's... I guess that's good though because they have to order more books yeah exactly they have to order more books so there you go and guys don't forget if you guys can stop by your local library or call your, call your local library and ask them to get a copy of catching up to crypto uh they pretty much have to and a lot of times they'll just order one for every library in the region it's a great way for uh people to get to read about crypto for free it's a little easter egg we can sprinkle around um okay <clears throat> so let's go full fud you guys want to go full fud today is that what they want is that what the people want full mm -hmm. fud why would they want that? Um, fam, coming from BitLab, headed to the basement, then candles, ready for the future in Web3. I mean, we certainly certainly have uh, a lot of different uh, shows here. Yes, I am reading the audiobook. So there will be four days this month I'll be reading the audiobook. I don't know if I'll have to miss the show. We'll have to get it figured out, but uh, there you go. Uh, guys, uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel here. Make sure to go to BitBoy Crypto on the YouTubers. So you guys can see we got plenty of other channels as well. Um, the, my son's channel, we're about to really, we, we got a new studio for that. We're really about to up the ante there. I'm excited. I think I'm, I think that channel may outgrow my channel in two years. Nice. I think. We'll see what happens. I've got big plans for that channel. Very excited about it. Um, but don't forget, we got Hidden Network. We get 24-7 streaming. We got Blockchain Basement around the Blockchain BitLab Academy. Crushing it, Kelly is. Don't forget Frankie Candles. Catching me closer and closer every single day. Um, what I really want to talk about, guys, today was I want to talk about uh, our bill. I want to start the show by talking about that and where that stands. Um, because, oh, man, <laughs> like it's very interesting what's going on out there um, with the political landscape. Uh, so what I want to do is I want to show you guys what our bill is and then i'm going to say we're going to have to change it probably um but the thing we're going to change it to is going to be much much better and do we have the uh political discord in the in the description yeah yes it is there now so yes. if you guys want to go join our political discord i did an ama from washington dc there last week uh make sure the link is down below so make sure to go hit that up and guys make sure to smash those like buttons number one thing you can do as a member of the bit squad to help not only with the bit squad but also crypto adoption. And I tell you what I want to see. I want to see more people out there with BitSquad license plates. I'm going to get a BitSquad license plate for my Lambo. Nice. You like that? Yeah. Billy Williams says, Ben, your book is dope. Thanks for everything you do, brother. Appreciate it. We had somebody gave us a one star. So now we're at 4.9. Got to get that. If you've read the book, please go give it a five-star review if you think it was good uh, on Amazon. Let's try to get to reclaim that five, that perfect five. I really enjoyed having that. Um, and I'm going to be looking at this week getting a schedule for uh wrapping up american cities on the book tour pretty much so i know we said we were going to do chicago and uh indianapolis detroit and probably columbus i know i said we were going to do that in the next four to six weeks i'm not sure if we're doing the next four or six weeks i'm definitely doing those cities uh this year i would say before the uh i don't know when i'm going to do them and maybe towards the end of the year but i'm this week i'm going to get those scheduled i'm going to figure out when i want to do those um, so, uh, San Diego also kind of want to do maybe, um, can you think of any other cities we missed? Tampa? I want to do a Tampa one. I can't think of any other ones. Can you? Mm -mm. Yeah. You guys drop in the chat. If, uh, you guys have a place that you want, uh, want me to go visit. We're doing Seattle also later in the year. Um, okay. So let's talk about the bill. So this is the digital consumer protection act of 2022. This was more commonly referred to as the Boozman or the, uh, Stabe now bill. Uh, this bill was going to lay out a lot of different stuff um, in crypto. Yeah, that's right. Detroit Pizza Town. We're getting that pizza there. Come to Portland. 
I'm not a hippie. I don't know if I'm, I'm allowed. Um, but basically what this was, we're going to straighten up a lot of stuff in crypto. Um, this is a, a long bill. Um, I mean, this here was actually, um, this was our synopsis of the bill, if, if you look at that. So um, there's a complete disconnect when it comes to the governance of crypto and blockchain technology. It stems from the very nature of the assets and technologies themselves. Like a paradigm shift, the blockchain technologies differ uh, so radically from the existing paradigm that they represent a challenge to the legal underpinning of exi uh, uh, existing regulatory structures. Um, unlike any previous paradigm shift, this one touches nearly every area of governance. Um, it goes on to basically think about we need forward thinking in this sector. Um, we need to have uh, this technology applied to financial markets. Uh, we need to basically avoid things that are roadblocks. People, projects are moving operations overseas. We've talked about that a lot. Uh, they're always on eggshells. The SEC, uh, the SEC, excuse me, has adopted a public stance of welcoming projects to apply for guidance and then has given zero clarifying um, <clears throat> uh, reports. CFTC uh, recently begun um, to, this was written several months ago, the CFTC was getting to really get in on, um, you saw Caroline Pham traveling around, meeting with Brad Garlinghouse, meeting with Ripple. Uh, they were really getting in on maybe crypto regulation. <clears throat> so obviously, if you have two apples on the tree, you got the, the, the tree of uh, good, the tree of evil. Okay, I don't think that's actually the tree. I think it was a tree of good and evil. But regardless, you got two trees. The SEC, that's the evil tree. The better tree was CFTC. So what we wanted to do was create um, a, an organization, basically, that would monitor crypto underneath the CFTC. So I'm going to pull this up here in just one second and show you guys what, our, what we want to do here. I don't show this quite yet. Oh, da, 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 da. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So this is about our digital asset commission. So our bill, it was a digital asset commission. Now we're, I want to put a poll up in a little bit, see what people think about that idea, but here it is. The advent of blockchain, NFT and metaverse technologies has created a new class of assets, digital assets. Digital assets were neither foreseen nor intentionally accounted for in the existing regulatory framework. Rather, they were patched into this framework, and as a result, both guidance and enforcement efforts have been inconsistent. The burgeoning digital asset sector is fast-moving, volatile, and complex by its very nature. Existing regulatory frameworks being designed to ensure both market stability and protections for investors were neither designed nor empowered to address this nature of these emerging assets. It resulted in an enormous gray area where neither the regulatory bodies nor the individual projects have clarity on the guidelines and best practices of the sector. Contradictory narratives and a lack of guidance or even the surety around whom should provide this guidance has led to both vulnerabilities and abuse and it has stifled America's ability to innovate and lead in this emerging space. To that effect, it is proposed that the CFTC should create a Digital Asset Advisory Commission, or DAAC. Now, here's what our bill was actually going to do, okay? It's a seven-person commission. It would be comprised of, now it's going up under the CFTC. Well, we'll go just a little bit in. There, ugh, I, can, I can only go, there we go. <laughs> right back to where I started. Uh, didn't get your book via Amazon. Can I still rank it? Uh, not on Amazon. You can, they, they want verified purchases over there. Wherever you got it at, you're going to review it there. <clears throat> okay, so seven-person commission will be comprised of CFTC members. Two. The goal is seven total. So two CFTC members, two legal scholars, and three leaders in the digital asset space and would serve as the first point of contact for any project seeking to participate in the digital asset space. That means any exchange, any project, they go through the commission. They don't go through the SEC. They, they go through the advisory commission. The DAAC's goal would be to provide clarity around the status of individual pro, uh, proposals as securities or digital assets. So it would be determining, is this a security or is it a digital asset? Takes the power out of the hands of the SEC. It should provide guidance to the project on the specific factors of the project that, uh, that led to its likely classification as either a security or digital asset. Uh, commission will report both annually to the CFTC uh, and the Agricultural Committee, which runs everything. We found out farmers are in control. That's why Bill Gates wants to be one so bad. Uh, reports would serve CFTC in its regulatory role. Um, ultimately, it would be incumbent upon a project to make sure it was in compliance. Yada, yada, yada. So, so here's, here's the long and short of what we were doing. Creating a seven 
member board that goes up underneath the CFTC. What I would like to have done is have two CFTC members, two legal scholars, maybe John Deaton could have been one, could have swung it our way, you know, and then three leaders from the crypto asset space. So this is one of several documents that we sent to Sam and we sent to Brett Harrison um, back in August, okay? So now that you see what we, are, we were slash are trying to do in some form, you understand why Sam went to go get on the DCCPA and try to make sure that he was in control of the regulation because it was about to come out of his hands. What we were doing is a fair way for crypto to be represented. And I, I think that, you know, one of the really interesting things here is that um, Sam wanted to control everything for the industries. And even looking at this, we would want to make sure that the industry didn't take over the board. And people would say this. They say, oh, you know, well, and also, by the way, the plan would have been for this to go up from the CFTC to its own commission down the road. And people would say, well, it'll be corrupt. It'll be corrupt. That, that's crazy. Um, because look at the SEC, look at the CFTC, blah, 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 blah. Well, yeah, that's fine. If it does become a corrupt organization down the road or a corrupt committee or commission, then that's fine. Because during the next five to 10 years, we would have laid out all the groundwork for crypto, digital assets before they were able to take it from us, okay? So that's that was the goal of the bill. Now, what has happened since then, okay? Since we had this bill and we paid the money, we're ready to make it public, we learned like we should slow down with it because uh, there's something coming, okay? So the thing that is coming is the stablecoin bill. And I got a lot of great questions, by the way, um, on my Twitter thread about that the other TJ, uh, yeah. the other day, TJ, for that survey. That. I'm gonna try to put that uh, together today. Not sure about Columbus, Ohio yet, D58, but we will, I'll, I'll let you guys know probably in the next uh, one to two weeks when that'll be. But the point is, is that, um, where I lost my train of thought. What did I just say to you? Uh, you said great, great comments on the survey. Right, oh, the, sta the stablecoin bill is coming first. So that will probably be released in the next, uh, I'm guessing, month, and it'll probably take all year to pass. What does this mean for our bill? This means there's no reason for us to pursue it right now until the stablecoin ban, or stablecoin bill, excuse me, is, is through and is passed. So what does that mean? Does that mean we give up? No, absolutely not. <laughs> no, no, no. Actually, here's the really cool thing. Uh, and plus, like, I'm sharing you, we could still go this route, but I'm sharing this with you guys today because we're changing what we're doing. We're going to change. The, I wanted to make this public and show you guys what we were doing because we talked about it for so long, so long, so long. Uh, one of the cool things we want to do is we want to make it where we, we could have a DAO that would choose the high-level crypto people making sure that retail was represented as well, along with maybe someone from exchange and someone from, I don't know, maybe Web3, something like that. Um, but we, I really want you guys to know what it was so you understand what you're backing, like what the BitSquad is pushing for. Uh, so put a poll up. Um, would you rather, uh, let's see. Yeah, start a poll. And let's say, hold on, let me think of how to say this. Um, would a crypto commission be the best way to regulate crypto. Yeah, uh, actually put uh, uh, put um, standalone, a standalone crypto commission. Yeah. Okay. So here here is here is what we discovered. We go to Washington last week. We talked to several offices of Congress about our bill. Uh, they're really excited about a lot of stuff that we can help them with in the meantime, but the bill is paused until the stablecoin bill comes through, okay? We're gonna start doing a lot of work on the back end, but here's the cool thing. The cool thing is the goal of this bill was going to be for this to come out from under the CFTC commission and eventually to become its own bill or its own commission. This completely independent has only people that understand digital assets on it. Now with the stablecoin bill being first and with Sam, and, and FTX scaring people so much to commit to crypto. Nobody wants to be the first one to move. Now we actually have much more time than we thought that we had. We have probably a, almost a full year to line this up and get ready. So once again, I can't, this is a little uh, chess right here. I can't tell you exactly what we're going to do because 
then somebody else will take it and do it. And I don't want them to do it. Um, we've already been in, in, in uh, some conversations with some members of Congress who are excited about this idea. Um, and so I'll just say it like this. The goal of the last one was to come up under the CFTC and then become independent. We now are looking at a way at bypassing the CFTC completely. And basically, it would already be independent. So that is, that is what we're looking for. Um, this would have to be done um, at this point, probably with uh, at least the, the Republicans in Congress. So we have until the end of next year. And who knows, maybe that gets more Republican or less Republican out of the next election. Um, but that's the goal. That's where we're going. Now, we did meet with bipartisan. We met with three on both sides. But this specific idea, uh, I think, aligns more with, um, you know, what maybe some some people on the on the right want instead of the left. They, they don't want the SEC or the CFTC to be in charge of anything else. Um, so uh, there you go. That is uh, exactly uh, what we were doing. Um, and that's what the greater plan is. Make sure to go join our policy discord so you guys can um, follow along as we're going through this process. We're still pursuing our state law in California and other states as well about accrediting investing. Um, we're just doing a lot of stuff. I just want to give you guys kind of like a state of the political world when it comes to BitBoy Crypto and what the BitSquad is doing. And it's so funny, right? Like you, you have all these people out there on Twitter. They just they just talk so much smack, you know, a bunch, bunch, of, bunch of low IQ people saying that like, you know, uh, why would people follow him? Blah, 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 blah. He, you know, he'll sell you for a dollar is what somebody said. And guys, we're the only channel out here that's doing this stuff. Us and Wendy. We're the only ones that are pushing regulation. We're the only ones that are going to Washington, D.C. We are the only ones who are standing up for retail investors. So whether you like me or don't like me, that's not debatable. That's not a debate. We are representing the best interests of everybody in this space, and we're doing it all transparent, and we're doing it so you guys see what we're doing and understand what our goals are about crypto. Man, watching Sam versus Eric Voorhees on that debate, it just so drove home exactly what we were doing. You don't want one person in charge of that regulation. You don't want the government only in charge of that regulation. You have to have people that understand digital assets making those decisions. So there you go. Um, all right, so... Uh, real quick, I'll take a look at the markets and I'll bring Frank up. Uh, we also have a very special guest on at 12.30. Uh, uh, he will be coming on to discuss bots in the NFT world. You're going to have to check this out. Um, he's he's doing a lot of killer research out there. So um, I I don't know what I'm supposed to call him, so I'm not going to say his name. I made Doc's real name if I say it, so I'm not going to. Um, but you guys can check that out. All right, uh, let's see here. Where are we at? Oh, don't forget, guys, uh, in Atlanta, we have our book tour uh, here. Um, we are going to be doing that on Wednesday night here at the studio. So if you guys want to check that out, you go to bitboycrypto.com and then uh, click book at the top and it'll take you this page right here and down at the bottom, you get the Atlanta information. Um, if you like it, my cool shirt, we got some really nice new shirts, by the way, make sure to hit up hitmerch.com. All right, here we go. Checking out what's going on on the markets. About the same place we left it last week, 1.07 trillion here on CoinGecko. We are switching to CoinGecko. Uh, 24-hour volume, 43.7 billion. Bitcoin dominance, look at that, 40.4. ETH, 17.6. I need to get a check on that. I need to see what it's saying on CoinMarketCap. Uh, 42.3 on CoinMarketCap. It is 42.3, so it's about the same. There well, are more altcoins on CoinGecko. That's why this number is different. Because I got excited for a second, and then I realized, wait a second. We got to get used to these new numbers. Yeah. So uh, Bitcoin coming at 22.5, ETH at 1574. Um, let's see, biggest gainers, GMX, Decentraland, Stacks. All over 3%. Singularity net down. We bought some Singularity last week. Felt like that was a good buy. Uh, ben Gertz will be coming on the channel later this month. Maker crushing it. Synthetics crushing it. Nothing else. Over 10% gains for the week. Clayton, Rocket Pool, and WeMix down. Uh, you heard about Lido Finance potentially receiving a uh, SEC letter? Uh, I didn't hear about that. I don't that. know if it's a rumor. I'm just saying that's the rumor. I don't know if it's true. wouldn't surprise me. I mean, it yeah. feels like everybody and their mom is receiving an SEC letter at this point. So anything related, close, yeah. anything loosely related to DeFi, they're sending it anywhere they can, I feel like. We have this comment here. George Michelle McGram started Charter Ben, make us an organization with members that want to support all the lobbying you're doing. Um, even though I personally do not agree with lobbying, it's a legal bribe system. Well, it's a system we have to work with them. You know, it is what it is. Well, I would agree with you. I wish the money wasn't there, but this is how it is. Uh, we are going to be doing that, actually. So that, that's another big announcement that I'm going to be making soon is we are creating a separate organization for this. Um, and it is going to basically be consumer advocacy for uh, digital assets for the retail investors. So um, we will we'll be, uh, you know, <laughs> what a scam, right? What a scam. So we'll be uh, showing that here pretty soon. So 
Uh, the Grenade Master says the credit belongs to the man who's actually in the arena. Vince Lombardi, my favorite Vince Lombardi quote, if if, if ifs and buts were candy and nuts, we'd all have a Merry Christmas. Um, but what I'll say about that is I'm certainly one leading the charge, but just remember, I'm a representative of you guys. If it wasn't for you guys, then we wouldn't have the voice of the platform we have. We couldn't go after these Celsius UCC members. It's because of this community, we a whole dang army up in here. And so, um, you know, th that's, that's the truth. So I'm the one out there doing the action, but I got a team behind me and I got a squad behind me and that's what counts. All right, Frank, come on up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what is going on, everybody? Yes, very true. Somebody uh, in the Candle Mafia took a picture of my calf and put a volume profile on it uh, and did some TA on my calves. And it had me absolutely cracking up. Uh, it, it was pretty funny stuff. Uh, but guys, we do have some interesting stuff to take a look at here on the charts today. Uh, now, we do have some potential bearish signs popping up on the higher time frames. However, it's not one of those like alarming, uh, you know, panic kind of bearish signals. It's kind of just like a general uh, signal that could indicate some more consolidation or uh, more moves to the downside. Uh, but again, not this emergency warning, big bearish signal flashing, or uh, at least not just yet. Uh, so I do want to take a look at some things. We're going to take a look at the two main key levels I am looking at um, and the level that we need to hold to maintain, uh, maintain our long longer term bullish sentiment. As you guys know, I am leaning a little bit more bullish long term um, until we start breaking bullish market structure on the higher time frame. So I want to show you guys that key level that we're watching, um, as well as some other key levels that we're keeping an eye on. We'll take a look at that bearish signal on the higher time frames. And then I'm going to talk about why I think we could potentially get a little bit of a pump here. So um, let's go ahead and jump right in here. Uh, make sure I'm on the right chart. I am. Um, so first off, let me just go ahead and hide all this TA and just talk really quick about the weekly. Now we are now printing this red dot on the weekly. And again, shout out. I see all the candles in chat. Shout out to you guys. Thank you so much. Uh, but uh, we do have the weekly red dot printing again, not like the most war, you know, not warning. Oh my God, we're going to zero type thing, um, but could indicate just some more potential, uh, you know, uh, on the weekly into the mic. Which hour? On the uh, weekly. The weekly. Okay. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we do have that weekly red dot printing. So it could indicate, you know, maybe a little bit more of a move down, or it could actually, if this pump is going to be for real, and this is going to be the start of a bigger move up again to that uh, potential 28 to 30K target, uh, we may just kind of see that wind up being some kind of uh, consolidation rather than some kind of a move down. Um, but I just wanted to cover that because it's something you just have to keep your eye on, right? Um, but coming down to the daily, guys, this is more of the bullish case here. Uh, I do want to go ahead and uh, just kind of look at this for a second. We do, uh, if we turn on the BitLab, uh, the BitLab trading stack here, you guys can see we are getting a bullish divergence here on the daily. And if you watch my channel and you look at these bullish divergences, you might be thinking like, well, hey, this doesn't really look like a regular divergence. And that is because it's a hidden divergence. Um, so uh, this is, and, and that's basically, guys, where you have higher lows on your price action with your lower lows on your oscillator. Um, and I'll pull up the other indicators in a second, but you could just see that with the market intelligence indicator. We just kind of get that flag up here saying, hey, there's a hidden bull div right here. You don't even have to check your other indicators, uh, but you do get that little indication here. Also, on top of that, guys, we also do have the relative extrema bars coming all the way out of this green wave. This would also indicate a potential reversal to the upside. And then not quite there there just yet, but that significant movement indicator um, is looking like it may start to print a bit of a blue wave here, again, showing some kind of a temporary bottom. Um, so again, once we, if we do start getting a blue wave here on the daily, that would be a pretty strong indication that we would come up. But for now, you have that hidden bull div, you have the relative extreme of bars uh, coming out of that green wave. And then on top of that, guys, we do have some other uh, things that we are looking like we could get a little bit of a move up here. And I want to come down, pull up our levels here uh, and take a look at what we got going on, right? Um, so basically, guys, kind of how I am looking at things right now, again, keeping it very, very simple, um, just kind of zooming out and taking a look at that volume profile range. And uh, right now, this macro profile does come in with the value area high coming in again at about 25K. This has basically been the same for quite some time since we've rejected these highs. Uh, and then your value area low is coming in right here at about 21.9. So 
one thing you want to remember here, we have that weekly uh, re- <laughs> shout out to uh, uh, Anecdotal Smith says, bought my Frankie Candle shirt and beanie. Let's go. Shout out to you, bro. I uh, appreciate that. Uh, I hope you like it. Um, but uh, just kind of looking here, we are technically at the lows of the range here, right? So this is not the best place to, you know, see a weekly red dot and be like, oh my God, this is the time, uh, you know, to just completely flip bearish. Uh, you want to understand we are at the lows of the range, right? So I would expect some potential support here, especially with that hidden bull div forming on the daily time frame. And another thing you want to realize, guys, is that we also have this confirmed uh, bullish divergence on the four-hour time frame. Now, it hasn't really given us anything Thing up until this point. Um, but you, and it is somewhat of a uh, weaker divergence. You could kind of consider this with equal bottoms uh, on your oscillator here. Uh, but it is still technically a bullish divergence. So we did technically confirm a bull div on the four hour here. So not impossible to get some form of a short term pump up here. What I would rather see happen is I would rather see price kind of break down from here and actually come down and test uh, these levels down here in this blue box that I'll give you the levels for in a second. Um, but if we get that and we get our momentum wave to come down a little bit here and get a little bit of a cleaner bull div on the four hour, this, if we are able to get this to happen with that hidden bull div on the daily, that's where I think would be, this would be a very, very good place to be looking for a long, potentially actually riding all the way up to that 25K value area high, right? So we have the weekly red dot, which is bearish, but we want to understand we're at the bottom of our range. So you don't want to get overly bearish at support. Um, and again, because of that hidden bull div uh, on the daily and that four hour confirmed bullish divergence, not impossible to pump here. But again, I would rather see price take one more drop into this blue box before printing another four-hour bull div to get that bigger move up. And then again, guys, just looking at this as a range. I know there's other levels here, but at the end of the day, really all you're looking at is the volume profile, the value area high, and the value area low. This helps give you context into the market you're at, right? You don't want to short at support. And these these value areas really help you um, kind of see what the context of the market is, right? Are you at a major important level of support, or are you kind of at a level of resistance where that weekly red dot can bring you down more? So as of right now, the big bearish, you know, the, the the one bearish signal here really is that weekly red dot. But again, on the lower time frames, I do think we can see a, a potential move up before we see that movement to the downside. Because again, those higher time frames do take a little longer to play out. So um, I am feeling a little bit pumpy in the medium to short term, but keeping an eye on that weekly red dot for a potential push down, um, maybe after that pump. Um, but these are the key levels I'm watching, guys. And then this blue box, which again, if we do get a move down, would be the major level of support I am looking at is coming in between about $21,897 and $21,387. And uh, yeah, those are the key levels I'm watching. And I think that is about all I got for you guys. Back to Ben. Bing bong. Watch out for the pump, baby. Let's go. Watch out. Oh, we're pumping right now. Is that what you're telling the people? Hey, do we have, do we have the website from the newsletter? Yes. What is that? Is that in the description? I'm not sure, but it's crucialcrypto.io. Crucialcrypto.io. All right. I can drop it right here. You drop it in there. I'll pull it up real quick. Guys, we're launching a uh, weekly newsletter. Um, this is going to be a, a, basically an independent brand from um, BitBoy Crypto. Uh, we're working really hard on this to get this just right. Um, but uh, I think we need to do the first two for free. Okay. We're going to do the first two. Should we just do the first month for free? We just do the first month for free. Yeah. Let's do it. We'll do all of March for free. That's what we're going to do. And then if you want to keep keep it going next month, uh, you think it's good, it gives you a value. I think four is enough to figure out if it has, um, <clears throat> you know, if it's got uh, something you want in it. Uh, but if you guys go to crucialcrypto.io, uh, you can subscribe to get this absolutely free newsletter for four weeks. Um, so make sure you guys go hit this and uh, put your information on and if it's something you would like to uh, check out. Um, pr- pr- uh, Dan says, poll is irrelevant. Every crypto founder has yet to escape failure. Oh, yeah, he's a Bitcoin maximalist crate. Uh, they're talking about doing a um, possibly a Bitcoin caucus uh, instead of just a blockchain caucus. It's founded uh, 10 years ago. I think that'd be a very dangerous notion. <laughs> very divisive. Uh, Wick 5 a 9 says charts equals news. Chairman Powell meeting tomorrow, so we'll have to keep a watch uh, on that as well. Um, okay. All right. Let's move into uh, Twitter Buzz. All right. Yeah. Buzz. Twitter Buzz. Twitter Buzz. Twitter buzz. 
<clears throat> Watcher.guru just in 100% nuclear power Bitcoin mining facility launched in Pennsylvania just in time for them to announce uh, that they're potentially going to be requiring Bitcoin miners to give their emission uh, data every month or year hmm. or something. Yeah, interesting. Okay, well, there you go. That's good. Yeah. First time home buyers face the least affordable market on record per Bloomberg. Is that true, really? Oh, Red, that's my guy, Red Man. Make Red Man a mod. Okay. He messaged me on Twitter. Thank you. Yeah. He, he's been in here for a long time. He's also a mod on um, Sin City Crypto. Uh, but Isaac. yeah, I think that is true about the prices because the median yeah. price is so high and the interest rate is so high. It's, I was looking oh, at something. Oh, and that, the interest rate. Yeah. It's the interest rate kills it. I mean, you have to have. It was something crazy, like a huge down payment, and your monthly payments are huge. So, yeah. Dan says he's not a Bitcoin maximalist, but I can't ignore my point. The, what, what do you mean? Like, Ethereum hasn't failed. Cardano hasn't failed. You know, Bitcoin's only been around for uh, 14 years. It hasn't failed, but it's hardly enough to be able to say, I mean, we believe, right? But hard to broadcast uh, across the mainstream that it's made it, you know? So that, that's my point. Okay. Um, all right. In 1836, a sewer worker accidentally discovered an old drain that ran directly into the Bank of England's gold vault. Uh, he, he wrote the bank's directors, requested a meeting in the vault at an hour they're choosing. He popped out of the floor to greet them. Uh, this is an episode from Kaleidoscope, I believe. Yeah, sounds about right. Sounds about right. I'm watching that right now. I'm not, I'm not, I'm like about two thirds of the way done, maybe. Yeah. But, uh, anyways, <clears throat> um, yeah. So, uh, there you go. That's a very funny, he popped up to greet them. How about that? A kaleidoscope really threw me off. I fell asleep watching. You watch, are you watching Last of Us? Are you caught up? Uh, I've watched a couple episodes, but I'm- It's got such a Walking Dead feel to it. It does. It do and I love The Walking Dead before it really fell apart at the end. So, <laughs> do some hex TA. That's from Crypto Cool. Thank you for the super chat. Frank's gone. Um, okay, the news, wait, wait. The newsletter wants a payment? It's supposed to be free, right? It is. I'll have to look at it. Probably wants you to sign up with a payment option. Oh, it does. To probably get haven't. It probably doesn't charge you until next month. But is we'll, that correct? We'll, I'll check that Do out. Do you know that, AJ? And there is a way if you're a Pluto Alliance member, there should yeah. be a way when, with your stake Pluto Alliance. We will have that. We'll have that fixed tomorrow. We'll have that fixed tomorrow. I think, I think maybe what we do is we might just give maybe one. I don't know what we're going to do. We'll figure it out. There might have already been a plan for that. You may have to. If you want to cancel, you can cancel, but you may have to do that. Well, I'll talk about that with the team today. I didn't realize that was the case. Uh, but it is free. We're, I think we're going to do a, a free month. So Pluto Alliance, um, we'll talk to you guys about that. Um, you know, maybe we can have a meeting once we get this a little further on. It's constantly developing. It's, this is a big thing we, we put together. This is a, a turning into a mammoth, colossal thing. So it's, uh, it, we're, we're going to put a lot of emphasis on this. Um, it's going to have, like, staff, altcoin picks every week, stuff like that. So along with a lot of good information. All right, moving on. Or we're going to miss the show. Uh, U.S. rates for digital dollar fuels case for Bitcoin, uh, obviously. With the U.S. Uh, government's work on a potential digital dollar accelerating, I mean, the digital greenback could soon be a reality in the U.S. The case for Bitcoin becomes significantly stronger. Um, according to the DeVere Group CEO, this can include information about individual spending habits, income, and other financial activities. He re reiterates it's an extra uh, lever of control that they've never had before. And this is why, as per Mr. Green, Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies will become increase, uh, increasingly attractive, um, similar to me. TJ was supposed to make a comment. I, was, wasn't, I wasn't sitting here. BJ was adjusting. Something. I know. I just said I'm, I'm increasingly attractive like Bitcoin. Yeah. Thanks. Confirm. BJ confirms. Confirm BJ on the set, guys. Uh, overall, the VR CEO labeled CBDCs as unattractive due to privacy. You know, and, and this, this makes me think about what's going on with the CBDC. You got Tom Member putting out a bill basically saying anti-CBDC. Uh, anti, um, I, I think CBDC is coming. I don't think we can stop it. I think what you're seeing is, is you're seeing a, a, a subset of the Republican side dig in and say, we don't want one at all. And it's probably a negotiating tactic to make sure they get some of the things in it that they want. Um, you know, like not, not having people's money cut off from them because of something they said on social media, things like that. So um, I think probably this is just the beginning of negotiation uh, where they're going to say they're, they're against it. Uh, Maxine Waters, I believe, is for it, I think. Um, she's definitely for it at the federal level, not on the state level. 
Um, I know that much. So we'll have to see what happens. She's obviously in charge of the Senate Finance Committee, which is a pretty big deal. Um, so there you go. Wait, no, is she a congresswoman? She's not a senator, is she? She's Congress. So she is, she was in charge of it before, obviously. She leads the minority, though. So um, the, the Democrats in Congress. So that's what it is. Uh, Bitcoin's inflation rate is now three times lower than the U.S. dollars. Uh, Bitcoin dropping inflation rate uh, stems from the crypto's fixed supply, blah, 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 blah. Make sure you say emission rate. Yeah, you gotta say emission rate. Don't say inflation. Bitcoin's ability to record a low inflationary rate is because of the assets deflationary model. Uh, best inflation hedge, yada, yada, yada. I mean, this is just stuff I tell you guys every single day. Bitcoin halving drives the price. Supply and demand built in. I, I want to make one more comment on what I just said about uh, Tom Emmer uh, in that strategy. One of the reasons why I think that's a, that, that's a potential strategy that we could see is because I've been told that's Gary Gensler's strategy with the SEC. Is that what Gary Gensler is doing is he's digging in his heels on one side totally, completely. Obviously, that's not going to work. We're library precedent. We already have. But to position himself to where when he wants to take what he wants to take, we'll just be like, yeah, sure, take that. Just don't take this, you know? So uh, as long as you're not in charge of all of it, you know, that's going to be the thing that people are going to say. So I've been told he's, he's on his way out, um, but that could be changing. That could be changing um, if people realize he's actually not in charge of the things he's saying he's in charge of. So basically, like, imagine it like this. If Gary Gensler butted out of crypto and he stopped going after tokens as secondary sales, uh, as securities, start going, stop going after your favorite exchanges and saying they're selling securities when nothing on those sites has been proven to be a security, like Binance US. If he stopped all that and just went back to like traditional finance world or actual scams, would you want him out? I mean, yeah, we want to see him fired and punished and lose his job because he's hurt a lot of people. I understand that. But taken within a vacuum, would you take that choice? So I've been told he was going to be out by about the middle of June. That was much earlier this year. There has been a... Guys, this FTX thing has scared people so bad in Washington. It really has. I didn't think it had. From, from people we were talking to, it wasn't. But after going up there and taking in the full view of what's going on, uh, which I did get recognized in the Capitol, seventh floor, Longworth. Where's my guy? I saw he made a comment the other day. Appreciate you, bud. Somebody in the Bitcoin was up there. Um, but uh, but yeah, so I think that's, I, I think that's you know, as long as we get what we want, that's what we care about, right? And that's what I feel like the XRP people have had a hard time with, with the, uh, the Ripple case versus Ethereum. Yes, there's corruption in the SEC with Ethereum and William Him and the whole nine yards, of course, obviously. But the focus shouldn't necessarily be on bringing Ethereum down. The focus should be on, let's get this Ripple case over and then after it's under our belt, we can say like, okay, maybe now, you know, uh, we can turn our eyes towards other stuff. You just got to say focus on the main thing. Say focus on the positive. Don't focus on the tearing somebody else down until you get your positive result. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. All right. Um, we have this. Bitcoin flatlines at 200, or uh, excuse me, at 22.4K ahead of Powell's uh, congressional testimony, Market Watch. Uh, over the landscape, uh, however, the landscape will likely change today or tomorrow as all financial markets are preparing for Fed Chair Jerome Powell testimony in front of Congress. Um, when's he testifying in front of Congress? I think Tuesday That's tomorrow? Or, Tuesday or Wednesday, I think. That's not an FOMC meeting they were talking no, about. No, it's, a, I think, in front of the Banking Committee. In front of the Banking Committee, great. So here's, here's um, something interesting to think about. Um, I had a dream that they raised it. 50 bips on the next meeting. Could be. I, I had a dream. That really happened. I literally dreamed about Jerome Powell. Who's the weirdest person you ever had a dream about? I don't know. Weirdest person? Yeah. Mine's Jerome Powell. Yeah, that's a pretty weird one. Pretty weird. Interesting. Um, okay. It's hard to pull out. You've had a lot of dreams in your life, but it's hard to actually pull yeah. any I've been real dreams you I've had. been having a lot of weird ones this year specifically. Yeah. Uh, so it's hard to even thinking back through those. I, I can't even. Yeah. And guys, I'm not saying that, I'm not saying ETHGATE, like ETHGATE is a big deal. I agree. It's a big deal. But just rather focus on, right, we've already exposed it. We've talked about it. We've shown it whole nine yards. Would rather focus on, let's get the XRP case uh, across the finish line now than maybe go back and revisit some of that stuff. feel like it's getting pretty close to the end. Um, yet, uh, it, all price stability could change in the following days. Jerome Powell uh, scheduled to testify in front of the banking committee. So there you go. We'll have to watch that, see what happens tomorrow. Institutional investors are looking beyond Bitcoin ETH, says Coinbase exec. 
uh, institutional investors may be more open to crypto assets other than Bitcoin and Ethereum. This is what you start seeing at the beginning of this market. You get start seeing this, the VCs getting ready. Um, I was told quarter two and quarter three will be the best time for small coins. Not, not for them to move, but to accumulate them. So we'll see. Uh, in terms of flows, 55% of institutional clients continue to bet on Bitcoin and Ethereum, while the rest continue to believe in altcoins. Um, the fact that institutional investors are becoming more interested in altcoins other than Bitcoin and Ethereum suggests that the crypto market may become more diverse in the next few months. What? The crypto market may become more diverse in the next few months? I thought Bitcoin dominance was going to 60%. So there we go. All right. Um, oh, I see what I did. Yeah, it happened. Yeah, I saw what I did. Crypto exchange Kraken announces plans to launch its own bank. Is this an FU to the SEC? Uh, I think it's more a response to what they were going to have to do in order to continue to operate. So we know FTX was trying to get their own bank, basically trying to be there, yeah. you know, have a fiat on ramp and off ramp. We know Coinbase is getting set up to be a, a federally regulated, approved custodian. You know, we know there's issues with, you know, they're putting the squeeze on Silvergate and Signature and a lot of the other banking things. Yeah. So if Kraken and Coinbase can start to set up fully regulated, vetted, open banks, they can solve this problem for themselves instead of having to rely on another party, I think is more what this is. Yeah, I agree. Um, Kraken Bank is on launch, on track to launch. Development comes amid a tumultuous time for the crypto sector. Yeah, we see that, yada, yada, yada. Exchange declined to discuss the SEC settlement, but said that staking had been a small percentage of its revenue. Kraken neither admits nor denies the allegations in the complaint. And I told you what I think the move from the SEC coming is taking over staking. I think staking is an investment contract. It's a much better argument, I believe, than altcoins. And I, the, this is the territory I think they're going to move into. What do you think? That makes sense. Yeah. yeah. And, I, and I kind of, I, when we first saw the Kraken stuff and they kind of folded on that really easy, I think I felt the same thing. Like staking is not a big yeah. part of Kraken's business. Right. It's easier to just pay it and move on than it is to put time, effort, energy, and money into fighting that case, even if they really didn't do anything wrong. I think that's what was so frustrating for Jesse Powell to have to, to have to make that business decision and then see Gary Ginsler out there beating his chest like, oh, look, we're taking down the bad guys. And he's yeah. like, there's no way Kim we, Kardashian. Should, we should not be, you know, we should be considered bad guys. We're doing everything right. And, you know, we have to pay cost of doing business to these crooks right. and they're you know yeah that would be so frustrating so, so uh jack keen says so another celsius in the future question mark uh we got big video on old clawback keith coming tonight get ready for that um but the fact is is that uh, someone else said something along these same lines said feds won't approve crypto banks well what's going to happen is they're not going to have to approve crypto banks because they're going to make the regulation so that banks can enter crypto and the door's not going to swing the other way right so basically, if you become a bank, you're going to be a bank, and your bank is going to be crypto and traditional finance in the future. So it doesn't surprise me they're not approving those. They're, these are the types of moves that they're doing to really give the traditional finance sector a head start to be able to get things in line. That's, yeah. that's what I think Well, they're going to keep the prices yeah. and the licenses and everything you need to do this so out of reach for startups yeah. that it's going to be for big banks that are already operating where they get their, you know, they're protecting their donors, basically, which yeah. is what they've always been doing. And I, I also think, I had a really good point I wanted to make about this, about crypto banks, the SEC approving um, altcoin secondary sales. What was my point? I had such a great point. Um, it's so good that I need to, to sit on it for a second before I, I, I let this train of thought go. What was, what was that question they asked me about a second ago? It was about the... Another the one before another the Celsius. Oh, another Celsius, right? Okay, so exactly. Here's what's really important: they're they're dissecting the user terms of service like a lot right now, trying to figure out what you know what we can solve when it comes to the bankruptcy case from the terms of service. What was us being stupid and signing stuff, and what was Celsius making unlawful terms of service? So when we look in the future and we look at things. Um, that are going to be like Celsius staking platforms. First of all, the staking numbers are going to go down considerably, so it's going to be much safer. Um, and I'm not telling you to do it. I'm just telling you the facts, okay? Number two it is going to be, they're going to make sure that they've got the funds backed up. That's what's going to have to happen. If you want to take customer funds and go gamble with it, 
you need to at least have enough money in your company to cover your customer funds first. So I think that's something that, uh, you know, they could be potentially looking at. And the third thing will be making sure that the terms of service are lawful. So like with our digital asset commission, advisory commission I was talking about earlier, and now moving on to maybe an independent organization, what we're going to do is we're going to create, well, I'm not going to, I don't know, maybe I'll be, I don't think I'm going to be on it. But the point is, is that we're going to use that in order to get what is right, wrong, and what's lawful and unlawful in these terms of services. It needs to be so that if you're spot trading and you're not doing an earn program, that your funds are your funds, they're not the exchanges. That was a, a ruling in a court case, um, in a Celsius court case, but that's not an official, uh, you know, that's not from the SEC. It's not from a digital asset commission. That's just kind of out there floating um, for uh, the bankruptcy. So it could be a bankruptcy precedent, but we need to get this law established somewhere else. What, you know, where we own our own funds. It's the only way this is going to work. Or I mean, people are going to keep moving to decentralized finance, uh, you know, because of that. Crypto banking firm BCB readies U.S. dollar payments to plug Silvergate Gap. BCB Group, a payment success, uh, processor that linked crypto companies to the banking system, is accelerating plans to add U.S. dollar capabilities. Oh, man, you know what's going to happen? And this is because they shuttered the SEN. We talked about this on our Silvergate video. It's the Silvergate Exchange Network. Ah, this is going to open it up for the banks to come in and yep. uh, on-ramp crypto companies. Yep. That's what's going to happen here. And that's why they did it. Yep. So no, it's worth noting that uh, New York uh, City Bank excuse me, NYC-based signature bank Signet, an equivalent to SEN, has to date been the next largest network for USD settlement. That said, Blink, a dollar component, has been in works in about a year and is about ready to launch. It's interesting looking at what, you know, what players might jump in this game now. There's a big hole. Um, in, a decent, or in a decentralized model, which you have with Silvergate and Signature as a credit institution solution applied to what's primarily a payments problem. Um, Silvergate's trouble started when they allowed long-term Bitcoin bets against short-term cash deposits. Impossible position to unwind in 2022's crazy market. So there you go. All right. Uh, Silvergate halts crypto payments after suffering $1 billion loss. Um, Silvergate Capital has pulled the plug on the SEN. We just talked about that a second ago. With a $1 billion loss at the end of the fourth quarter and more losses in January and February, Crypto Bank disclosed in a filing on Wednesday that it may need to evaluate its viability. The next day, a number of notable crypto clients left the bank, including industry leaders Galaxy Digital and Coinbase, and its stock price dropped by over 60% before stabilizing on Friday. Um, okay. Tether responds to Wall Street Journal FUD regarding falsified bank documents. What do you think about this? Have you seen this story? I have. I mean, is it shocking? No, it's not. It's, it's well... Yeah. Yeah, it's not shocking. If anything, it's a little bit, uh, you know, because this industry doesn't uh, necessarily respond, you know, like, what's the right way to say this? It's known for being anti the system, anti the government in a lot of different ways. So it's not necessarily surprising to think some of these things were doing everything they can to appease the powers that be without really respecting the rules and the framework that they outline. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, this isn't really surprising to me at all. Well, I've always said, I think they have the money, but I think they've got some sketchy stuff in yes. their documents. Right, I agree. Uh, Noel says, how could you get Crucial Crypto for free? Uh, I think that should be like a trial, maybe. We'll to... We will talk about the Crucial Crypto stuff again tomorrow because I didn't know that was on there. So we'll get that, uh, we'll get that figured out. All right, um, let's see. Leading stablecoin issuer, uh, Tether is once again slammed mainstream media, the WSJ. Um, let's see. Paolo Arduino blasted the media house on Twitter, saying the article was filled with tons of misinformation and inaccuracies. It's worth noting this is not the first time Tether has responded to WSJ for disinformation and FUD. In December, the stablecoin company responded to Wall Street Journal, a report that called out Tether for having potentially unreliable reserves for its secured loans. I mean, that's a big, that's a big accusation to put in the Wall Street Journal. Yeah. Don't you agree with that? Like, that's insane. Um, and they just keep continuing to pound Tether over and over and over again even though it's really clear that to this point, they haven't shown themselves to be insolvent. Nope. They handled several bank runs. And they also, um, you know, ha have shown themselves to not run from this stuff. They, they had a settlement with the CFTC, I believe, had a settlement with the Southern District of New York. I don't know where they stand with the SEC, but um, you'd have to prove that Tether's a stable or a, a, a security, which obviously stable coins are not securities. Um, so according to the SEC, Chuck E. Cheese coins are securities. I mean, literally, like, like literally that's what they're saying. If a utility token 
is you buy something and you use it, but also the price might fluctuate, but you're using it as a cog in a system, then that's not a security. His argument is with stable coins uh, is that, <laughs> look at this picture of him. Golly. You know who he looks like? That guy from the Princess Bride, the little short guy. Oh, yeah. He really does. That picture especially, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but but the point is, is that he's saying stable coins play a role in people making money in crypto, so there are securities. That's not how that works, Gary. You don't just get to change uh, the definition for sure. You guys make sure to smash that like button um, if you guys are still interested in Bitcoin, even though it's been stuck and it's been a boring month. Biden has tried to hire Gary Gensler in 2018 for closer ties with U.S. regulators. Ooh, did you know this? I didn't. Wow. Which cup? Or which you think I'm going to take this cup, but I'm actually going to take this other one because reverse psychology. Isn't that kind of the, the yeah, scene? Kind of sort of. Yeah. yeah thanks. <laughs> oh man, I could do. I could make a great meme off that. Securities and commodities with Gary Gensler. Uh, crypto exchange Binance sought to hire Gary Gensler as an advisor, um, according to the Wall Street Journal, as well as interviews with former employees. Um, let's see. Ella Zhang, um, Harry Zhu, declined the position. According to a Binance employee, Gensler would have likely would be likely back in a regular seat if Dems win the 2020 election. Second meeting uh, took place in March 2019 in Tokyo between Gensler and CZ in 2019 in Tokyo. Wow. Uh, in April 2021, uh, Gensler became the SEC chair. Uh, Binance is reportedly preparing to face fines and penalties um, in order to settle uh, investigations. I mean, that is just bribe money, basically. Uh, not that they're bribing the SEC. The SEC is asking for it. Uh, SEC staff, sa uh, staff says Binance.us offers unregistered securities, claims lawyer. Right, this is what I was talking about earlier. We kind of already talked about this. Um, once again, look at this, though, guys. Look at this. The lawyer for the SEC says Voyager's token offering was a security. This is the same language. Man, this is good. This is good right here. Because they're already pretty much saying secondary sales, man. I mean, that's what they're saying. Wow. Uh, U.S. Department of Justice restricts Sam's ability to use a smartphone as a battle for Robin Hood shares intensive. This guy, big and bushy and not trim it. So, all right, we're running out of time, so I'm going to click through these real quick. Crypto community criticizes Yuga Labs auction model um, for its first Bitcoin NFT. Cardano founder says... Um, NFTs are the most vibrant part of the ADA ecosystem. I would agree with that as well. Um, Cardano's governance gets questioned. Uh, Charles Hoskinson responds with uh, saying it's categorically false. I had already read that. XRP Army, where are you at? Throw the X up. Throw the X up in the chat. We're going to be talking about uh, Cardano's our tribal Solana here in a few minutes. Um, a little bit. Uh, XRPL community remains divided on the proposal to raise transaction fees. Uh, the Ribble community on Twitter has been engaged in a heated debate over a proposal to raise transaction fees on the XRP ledger in order to boost the price of the token. Due to its low transaction cost and speed, XRPL is popular in payments. Average network transaction costs less than 0.1% and takes three to five seconds to complete. Um, in conclusion, the XRPL community remains divided on the proposal to raise transaction fees in order to boost the price of XRP. So there you go. Um, we got two more Ripple stories. Ripple judge, uh, Ripple case judge accused of being a deep state operative. Did you see this? No. Where they were saying that uh, Annalisa Torres dismissed the uh, Jeffrey Epstein guards from uh, negligence, basically. I did see uh, that. What's that? I did see that. Mm -hmm. I just didn't realize they were. it was the same judge. Annalisa Torres. Mm -hmm. Now, she is the... Main judge, the magistrate judge, is Judge Netburn. John Dean voices support for the judge overseeing the SEC versus Triple Capes. Uh, despite accusations, she's a deep state operative. Now, funny enough, somebody actually tweeted uh, about me in this, actually. Um, let's see. Tweets. Are, uh, did you see this? Well, guys, it's time to announce I'm making a career change. I'm now going by Magic Internet Money Mike, and I will be stripping at this Bitcoin strip club in Miami. Sheesh. Thanks, guys. Uh, don't you hate crypto? This guy hates crypto. Why Why is he saying this? Uh, let's see. Tweets and replies. Where's my reply? Here it is. This is my, they're all actors in the show. That's always been obvious for those with eyes to S33. Deaton, 
Hogan, Flynn, Fojack, I don't even know who that is, Bid Boy, XRPP, Mr. I, etc., etc. The list goes on. We're all playing a role in the theater of the XRP Ripple case versus the SEC. Yes, that's right. You didn't know I could do different voices on the show because I'm an actor. There we go. Uh, my, my comment to this, of course, was, I am not a theater kid. <laughs> I am not a theater kid. I've worked very hard not to be a theater kid in my life, despite the fact I'm such a great actor. Um, okay. <laughs> oh, we got one more story and we'll bring him on. Uh, XRP lawsuit sees biggest choice yet, as recent Supreme Court ruling supports Ripple's fair notice defense, but they didn't even, uh, they didn't even put the fair notice defense as one of their main defenses in their summary judgment. Uh, in court documents, Ripple argued the, the recent U.S. Supreme Court ruling uh, in Bittner versus U.S. Uh, buttresses, 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 their fair notice argument. Uh, throughout the pretrial phase of the SEC versus XRP lawsuit, uh, Ripple's lawyers established the SEC uh, denied fair notice uh, but on crypto assets in general. Um, so there we go. All right. Oh, uh, well, I didn't, did I finish reading this? I didn't. I started talking and I stopped. Basically, what John Deaton says is that um, what she did was actually good. It wasn't bad. Everybody's misconstruing what she did on that case. And so there you go. All right. Let's, uh, you want to come hook me up, Drew? Weren't you just in a movie? I was. I'm going to be in another one too. I mean, a few more and TV shows. I am a good actor. That's the truth. I am. Yeah, that was a good quote. I'm not an actor. I just play one on TV. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Okay. Ready? All right. What is going on, Otto? Is he there? He was a minute Did ago. He here now. There he is. He had the mic off. Yo. What's up, buddy? Uh, you guys can hear me? Yep. Yeah, mic is off. Hey, what's up, you. my man? What's up, big boy? Chilling, man. So, um, kind of want to get, kind of want to get everybody like kind of a a, a rundown of uh, what you did. So basically, you had created, um, kind of like a, a fake NFT project almost. Um, or and you use that to track down several bots, and basically you came to the, the conclusion that almost the entire you know NFT hype market on Twitter is completely fake and ran by bots. And it was a really cool post. I'm gonna pull out the post here in just a second. Um, but if you could like just kind of give like a, a little bit about yourself and and how you got involved in that and, and what actually you did and why you wanted to do it. Yeah, for sure. Uh, can you guys hear me okay, by the yeah, way? I'm not breaking you. up or anything. No, you're, you're, you sound fine over here completely. All right, sweet. Good, good. All right, so what happened was I got into NFTs to make money. I made a good amount of money. When you're in, Everyone wants to make their own NFT eventually. I wanted to do that, but I wanted to do it the right way. So, you know, instead of just hyping something up and then pumping it and dropping it, I made a fake NFT project in the efforts to kind of decentralize where hype came from. So fucking crypto and NFTs, like this entire market, it's like new coins, new projects pop up out of nowhere. And within like three days, they blew up. And I'm just, I'm not naive enough to ever believe that that happens organically or it's out of nowhere. Always assume that there's someone behind the thing. So I made a fake NFT to kind of get behind the scenes and see what was really going on. And just pushing the buttons, making stuff blow up. And on top of that, I had a research team trying to expose the scams. Through that research, I eventually uncovered a huge fucking botnet who, you know, was behind all the hype in the market, almost all the hype in the market, maybe not moving very to some VC projects, but the majority of the liquidity over the past year, same people are involved or directly behind the projects in it. And then what I did was, you know, I sat my ass down, I grinded, trapped about 158 pages, some yeah. more in depth than others. And, you know, it's hard to fight the bots or the people with influence when, you, when you're not in that circle. It's hard to get the social capital yourself to make sure people hear about you, right? So I was like, fuck it, I have a fake NFT page. Why not just pull off a huge uh, social experiment and try to do some organic marketing to force people to look at it? We're seeing a lot of fake to come. We got on the front page of the crypto Reddit toys. It was pretty sick. And all of that was just to garner publicity and attention for my story in the same way that, you know, people with bots, use the bots to garner publicity and attention for their shitty projects that make like millions of dollars. Yeah. So that a good answer. It's, that was pretty in-depth, but. 
Yeah, no, no, that was good. And uh, if you could, if you could try to watch a language, it's okay. It's not, it's not, uh, it's not the worst thing. Uh, Apologies. Just, yeah, no, no Apologies. problem. We build a show; it's family friendly. So if you let one fly, don't worry about it. But uh, yeah, just, just if you could. Um, so I pulled up. If you pull up TJ the, um, uh, the screen here real quick. Can you pull up my screen, or mm-hmm. do I need to? Should, would it be better second. for me to share from? Okay, yeah. there it is. So this is his uh, Twitter account, uh, Little Shapes NFTs. Um, at Little Shapes NFTs, and basically from here, you can go here to this uh, to this site. You didn't drop him, right? He's still there. He's still here. Okay. Just, yeah. All right. Okay. Um, and this is what it takes you to. Oh wow! It's, is it down? My API plan does not uh, allow me to have. Uh, I had to post a new link. What's that? No, there's a new link in the in the bio. Oh, uh, in there's the bio. There's a new link in the bio. It's in Google okay, Drive. Okay, I, I see. There it is. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, old one got. Okay. Yep. Yeah, I'm having problems pulling it. The one in the link, I'm having problems pulling up too. Uh, something about Twitter. It looks like it's a problem on Twitter on my side. That's weird. Anyways, um, let's see if I can try to copy this and paste it instead and not go directly from Twitter. Let me try that. Copy link address, open up a new tab. Nope. That's really weird. Uh, but anyways, guys, the, the document was, it was 158 pages. Yeah. And if you saw it on Twitter, which I, w- I don't know why we're having problems pulling it up, but um, if you saw it on Twitter, it was absolutely massive. And he went so into depth with stuff. And I think one of the most fascinating things that you told me is that uh, basically when it comes to looking at the, the scams and the propaganda and the bots, these bots are so sophisticated that it's almost impossible to tell if they're if they're real or not, and and by the way, before before uh, I ask you about that, everybody, we're gonna be doing an in depth video on all this. So we're gonna be doing an in depth video that's gonna go over all this uh, on the channel, uh, either maybe next week, this week, sometime around there. But yeah, what what did you find about how realistic these bots were? Oh, that's pretty interesting because at the start, like you know, February twenty twenty two, they were pretty bad bots, super easy to call out. For some reason, no one really saw them because, you know, people weren't looking that deep into it. But back then, it was, like, all in your face, same PFP, same bios, you know, very obvious bots. In the past few months, I want to say, like, around October-ish, uh, you know, they have, like, their own tweets, their own pinned tweets. They post, like, random weird Google images photos out of nowhere. And I think the tweets from, like, a database of other people's tweets, and they just, like, seal them to make the bots look more real. But at this point, it's, like, you can't tell if this is like a bot or just a guy that enters a lot of giveaways. Yeah. And they just pepper yep. with like, you know, I'd assume now like chat GPT, like tweets and stuff like that to just like yeah. make it almost impossible to tell like who's real and who's not. Yeah. I think that's, I think that's, that's uh, a really a scary proposition because one thing that I know we're going to be working on after this bot video is uh, I'm really interested to see the Solana propaganda army because I know that Alameda and FTX uh, and Solana have the biggest bot army that exists out there. And I think a lot of the stuff that you found in the NFT world, which some of those were on Solana, I'm sure, um, that there's crossover with the regular crypto space as well. What what did you see about bots when it came to different, was it uh, did was there no discrimination when it came to which chain or were there certain chains that you found had a lot more bot activity? I'll say I focus on NFTs for the most part because it's just such a, a broad, big space. But step in the, what is it, like, rent-to-earn project. I saw a lot of the NFT bot network bots migrate to that project, which, you know, like half a billion dollar market cap, a lot of yep. money there. New network, like a new layer one's coming out called the SUI network. Yep. A lot of bots from the original NFT network migrated there. And I'm just like, I haven't looked in depth into, you know, various cryptocurrencies or, like, projects that pump or reuse bots well, what, what about the NFT, the narrative the, the nft but projects like, themselves the M- nft projects themselves like did you find that they like it was more ethereum based nfts or solana based nfts or cardano based nfts did, did, did you look into it uh in, in terms of like what chains those nfts that were getting hyped up were using i would assume they would probably use solana and uh mm-hmm. and, and, and bs uh, uh bsc chain because the fees are lower than Ethereum, um, but maybe, like, did you see they were mostly Ethereum NFTs? 
at the start, mostly Ethereum stats, you know, what was pumping and yeah. what was printing the most money at the time. And like March, I want to say May, like a lot of Solana bot network projects popped out. A few Aptos ones came out too, yeah. like recently, which is pretty funny. When Aptos like first dropped the L line, a few botnet, you know, Aptos and MTs uh, also dropped. And I want to say, when I say botnet, I'm, I'm talking about like not just bots in general, but uh, an insider like specific botnet yeah. with, you know, the same people behind it who you can also assume are behind like a lot of these other projects. It's not just like random bots. It's like an organized network, like a personal bot army. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I think, I think when you look at, uh, when you look at uh, FTX and Alameda and Solana, um, you look at a lot of crossover between those projects you were talking about. Um, obviously uh, Solana or uh, excuse me, uh, SBF and Alameda heavily invested in all three of those projects, Aptos, Sui, and also, um, step in. I was told step in was basically used in a similar way to how Serum was used, uh, or FTT, just a way for them to pump up the volume. Um, you know, not like a jock jam song, but more, <laughs> more in line of, uh, you know, pumping up the volume to create those high demands for those market caps to get so big. So a lot of crossover there. I think, I think the work you did is absolutely phenomenal. We're glad to have you, uh, you know, working with us on some of these videos. Because the research you did was bar none. It, it was the best research I've ever seen in the space, to be honest with you. It was so in-depth. Um, and it was a shame that for some reason we're not able to pull that document up. But if you guys want to see the document, we're going to show the document um, on uh, on a video here very soon. So you guys be on the lookout for that. And uh, Otto, thanks uh, so much for joining us. And I uh, look forward to keep working with you, man. Yeah, for sure, my guy. I appreciate the compliments. Absolutely, man. All right, you guys make sure to go check him out at Little Shapes NFT on Twitter. All right. Um, okay, so I mean, I, I, it sucks we couldn't pull that up. It's it is the most. Have you seen it? I have not. <sighs> it's the most in depth research I've ever seen in crypto. It's it's amazing. He said he worked like 40, 60, uh, 40 to sixty hours on it. So, um, <laughs> that's a heck of a super chat. I don't even know what to say about that. Is that a chat GPT? Give me greatest conspiracy tweet of all time. And that was it. All right, guys, uh, that's it. I got to run. I got an appointment I got to get to. So we got to leave a little bit early today. Uh, but thanks so much for uh, watching. Um, hope you guys uh, join our policy discord uh, and check out what we're doing in, in politics. Glad I can finally at least share with you what we're doing. Um, and that's all I got. Be blessed. Good boy out.